Hi, I'm Ryan of Midnight Solar, and today I'm in Arlington here at the factory to show you how to wire up and program Follow Me in the Classic Charge Controller. What Follow Me is, is the network coordination between Classic Charge Controllers. It works with regular Classics and Classic Lights. We'll talk a little bit about, more about that when we get to the programming aspect of it. But it coordinates things like float, equalize, ground fault errors, battery temperature, etc., etc. And to do follow me, basically what you need is standard four conductor phone cables. At midnight we do offer a variety of lengths of networking cables, or you can make your own. The uh, pinout is in the manual. It's standard phone cable, standard phone jacks, standard phone pinout. So to do follow me wiring, what we need to do, we need to take the first cable, plug it in the middle jack of classic number one. Need to go over to the bottom jack of classic number two. We go to the middle jack of classic number two, over to the bottom jack of classic number three. Now to finish the loop, we have to go from the middle jack of classic number three back to the bottom jack of classic number one. Now you could conceivably have 200 classics there. The principle is still the same, one to two to three, all the way up to 200, and then back around the loop to classic number one. Basically, you're making a circle out of your wiring. It goes around the circle, comes back to the starting classic. And basically what that is doing, each classic is its own device, if you will. It's not a master or a slave. Each one is doing its own thing. So whichever one goes to the end of the absorb timer first will trigger the float. All the ones upstream will ask it. They will all go to float, and it will continue around the loop until they're all in float. Same thing with equalize. If I press equalize on this classic, it's going to go around the loop, but all the classics and equalize. The only thing you have to do is uh, you do have a master classic for things like battery temperature sensor and ground fault. So on the master classic, we need to put on the ground fault jumper if we want to use ground fault. And that's in the manual. It's well described. Basically, it's this little jumper right down here. And it goes on both pins as so. Just sits over the two pins. Now ground fault is activated. Battery temperature sensor plugs in here on the master, and we need to remember which one of those we considered our master for those two devices because we have to program that accordingly later. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. We're going to stop now. We're going to button these up, put the covers on them, and then we're going to show you how to program these classics. Okay, now we've got all the controllers powered back up. We're going to go ahead and show you how to program Follow Me as well as how to address a classic so you can view, say, a classic light from another classic. So. If you remember from before, this classic here, we're going to call the master classic. It has the ground fault jumper on, and it has the battery temperature sensor plugged into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the main menu button, bottom right button, and we're going to scroll until we find tweaks using the left or right arrow. When we find tweaks, we'll highlight it like that. Push the middle button labeled Enter to enter into tweaks. Then we're going to use the very upper right button labeled More to go to the last menu and find follow me. So here you'll see it's automatically set for BTS net master and follow me is off. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn follow me on and that programs that controller. I'm going to hit enter to save that data and now what I want to point out is on the other two controllers we need to turn follow me on and we actually need to turn battery master off. It'll, uh, the other two controllers do not have a battery temperature sensor so we're going to turn those to the off position. When you're all done with that, we're going to press the status button to get back to the main menu. And now we're going to go over and turn follow me on in these ones and this one. So now you can see all three are in follow me. You'll also notice this blue LED is internally blinking, indicating follow me is working. A short Blip of the blue LED means it got good data from its neighbor. A long blip means it got bad data. You'll notice every now and then you will get a longer blip. That's normal. That's nothing to worry about as long as it's not doing continuously long blips. If they're continuously long blips, then you need to check your cabling. You may have a bad cable going on. Okay, so to address this classic, what we want to do, we want to hold the left arrow. We want to move up or down in numbers. And uh, I want to stop and talk about that for a minute. Address 10 is default address for all the classics. So what you can do is you can set each classic to a different address. 10, 11, 12, if you will. 
So let's go ahead and set this one for 11. Now we've got it on unused address 11. So what we're going to do is we'll hold the left and the right arrow buttons in until it tells us the address is now 11. As you can see, it says address is now 11. It's reacquiring with the classic, and the display has come back up. What that means for us is now this one, which is looking at address 10, we can hold the left arrow, and we can go up to 11, and it's now going to go through the follow me network, and it's going to ask that classic, I need to talk to you. And in just a second, it will come up and show that classic. And there you go. Now this display is actually talking to this classic through the network. And the reason I bring that up is because we have the classic light, the MNLP. This would normally be in the classic. I've just got it loose for demonstration purposes. No display, no push buttons. So what that does for you is allows you to save some money on the other classics. If you've got, say, a five, inst five classics to install, you can do one standard classic, five lights. What you'd end up doing is you'd pop the cover off the light. You'd set the dip switches for custom. That's very well documented here as well in the manual. And then you would take that, set it aside on all your classic lights, and you'd take the actual cover off what we call a master classic. And I'll explain what I mean by master because in the beginning when we were wiring these, I explained there was no master per se for follow me. But there is a master for the battery temperature sensor and for the ground fault errors. So you take the cover off your master, you move it over, physically plug it into the classic light, and you set the address for 11, and then you go through and program the follow me. Then you move it over to your next classic light, set the address for 12, save it, program follow me, and you get down through the line. And then you put it back on to your master classic, if you will, or the classic that had the MNGP on it to begin with. Now you're able to scroll through and see every light from the one MNGP, and you saved several dollars on the install. The other thing I'll point out too is in the follow me programming can actually be done with the local app software. So if you want to plug the Ethernet cables and all the classics, you can log on to it with your laptop, and you can do the follow me programming from your laptop if you don't want to push the buttons. The other thing I want to talk about is ground fault. The, uh, you remember me earlier putting the jumper on and saying that was going to be our master ground fault classic. Now, what that does is that shares that error across the network. So there's a software ground fault and there's a hardware ground fault. You saw me put the ground fault jumper on in hardware, so then we would go into the software and it will be on by default, but we would go into the tweaks menu. Again, you can always press the main menu button as many times as you need to get back to the main beginning of the main menu button. And then you scroll to tweaks, hit enter, hit more once, and the second one there is ground fault. Now, the reason I bring that up is because if you have, say, five classics, and one's on a hydro turbine, one's on a wind turbine, and three are on PV, you may decide you do not want ground fault activated on the hydro or the wind because you do never want to unload that turbine. So you may want to leave ground fault disabled on that device, but you want it on on the solar controllers. So when you network and you do follow me networking with ground faults, simply turn the ground fault off in software and hit enter to save that. On the controller, you do not want to turn off on ground fault error when the master classic detects a ground fault. So you, all the rest will be on by default. You disable the ground fault on the one you do not want to trip out on error if it's on a wind turbine or something like that. You can also do the ground fault programming over the local application software. That pretty much covers follow me and addressing and classic lights. So until next time, I'm Ryan of Midnight Solar.